good evening. I want you to picture a winter sky, thousands of snowflakes gently floating to the ground. Imagine millions, nay, billions of snowflakes all around the world that fall each winter. Every one of them unique. Everyone a one-off. Every one of them one of a kind. Now, think about the billions of people around the world. All the people who live here now. All the people who ever lived here before. And the billions of people who will inhabit this beautiful planet in the future. There's only one you. All those billions of people. One in a trillion you. It's pretty. The odds are quite impressive. Like a snowflake, you floated down. Your purpose was to enrich the world. That's it. That's all you're meant to do. But how would you do it? You owe it to yourself and to all of us to discover that gift that only you are able to make. You're here to be great. But are you? Are you making the most of that gift? Or are you shortchanging yourself? Are you sabotaging your efforts with last minute dashes, not giving yourself the time, the opportunity to do a good job on the tasks that actually matter? Procrastination is bad but not for the reasons we normally think. I believe procrastination is bad because it's a thief. It can rob you of your dreams. Worse, it can rob the world and all of us of that contribution that you alone are here to make. Some people they're born, they seem to just know. Musicians, so artists, entrepreneurs, scientists. Some people just seem to arrive on this planet knowing what it is they're meant to do. And they pursue it with a laser focus. They spend the time and they achieve greatness. The rest of us? We bumble along. We have an epiphany here, a little glimmer of greatness there, a spark of talent over here, but never quite feeling that we found our mission. Are you on your journey or are you just driving around the block looking for somewhere to park? The crime novel is P.D. James. She knew from an early age that she wanted to write. She had to forego university. Her father didn't think post-secondary education was a worthwhile endeavor for a girl. From the age of 16, she had to work to help support her family. But she never gave up that dream of writing. And in her mid-30s, married with two children, James started to write. She would get up early and write for two hours every morning before she went to work. What if she had chosen to sleep? There'd be no Adam Dalgleish 
and we would all be poorer for it. But you're not meant to be P.D. James. You've got your own gift. You're here to be awesome. Awesome. And whether that means being a brilliant cake baker, or a builder, or a mechanic, or a teacher, it's your duty to discover and nurture your talent. But when you procrastinate, you can't be great. I don't want to find myself the end of my life thinking, was that it? I want to find out that special way I'm meant to enrich the world. I'm determined, <clears throat> but I have a confession to make. I procrastinate. And no ordinary procrastination for me. Oh, no, 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 no. I have taken procrastination to an elite level. <laughs> In fact, if you check, you will discover I put the pro in procrastination. <laughs> the thing is, I have no trouble taking the time to help other people to achieve their dreams. The challenge is to help myself. When there's something that has to do with my own goals, my own ambitions, I have trouble just sitting down to focus, to spend the time, as the athletic swear company says, to just do it. Like this TED talk, I've been working on it for months, coming up with ideas, visualizing things, making notes, writing down post-it notes when inspiration struck, or on the back of a grocery receipt if I wasn't at home. It's been circulating in my head for months. But to sit down and actually pull all those pieces together into a coherent whole, that was a task. Not just a task, a daunting task, a gargantuan task, and a task over which I procrastinated. When you find yourself putting something off that actually matters, is it because you, you don't think it's worth the time? Or is it because it's so worth the time? It's so important that achieving it might actually shake up your life. Might change what's expected of you. What might it require you to do? Here's the paradox. The very thing you procrastinate over may actually hold the key to your greatness. In my case, something happened recently that made me think, maybe it's time to stop procrastinating. Last year, one of my friends died. <coughs> Barbara and I used to row together part of a crew of eight rowers, veteran rowers. And although we were together four times a week for two years, I didn't actually know that much about her. I knew she had a PhD and she taught community development or something like that at Queen's University in Belfast. The eulogy at Barbara's funeral it astounded me. She was only four years older than me, but the list of accomplishments, the range of achievements, it astounded me. Among them, she had established a college, a political party, and helped negotiate the Good Friday Agreement. <laughs> Little Barbara I rode with. <laughs> I had no idea. And her death motivated me. Barbara inspired me. I have to admit, my immediate reaction was, I have achieved nothing. 
And it was useful to realize that, to think, what are the things I want to do? Barbara's death inspired me, but it also motivated me. I didn't actually have all of the time in the world. If there were things I wanted to do, I'd better start doing them. It made me realize I didn't need to think about what other people thought anymore. It was time to simply start doing these things. So I tried three new things, and they have been amazing. Uh, public speaking, writing, and radio. Public speaking and working on my skills at Toastmasters led to doing workshops and other kinds of things, which has been brilliant. Writing that first article led to being published. But the most dramatic impact of all was the radio show. Hosting that show gave me the confidence to try something I'd wanted to do for years, but I never had the guts to. Stand-up comedy. And as our host mentioned, last Friday night, I made my stand-up debut. Oh. Naturally, the stakes were high. So I gave myself the greatest chance of success. I spent the time to do it right. Oh. Writing and rewriting my routine discarding the weak material and practicing, 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 practicing. When it came time to step onto that stage, of course I was nervous. I was petrified, but I was ready. And like that, a dream came true. I'm still not quite sure what my precise gift is to give the world. But these three new things, they've given me a glimpse. I battled procrastination. And momentarily, I got the upper hand. My reward was a glimmer of greatness. Like an evangelist now, I want to spread the word. I want you to feel that power, that joy, that potency that comes from doing something great. But if you procrastinate, you can't be great. We're all busy. We all get the same 1,440 minutes every day. If you want to find time for something that matters, something's got to give. A few years ago, many of you will remember, Delia Smith shocked the world with her new cookbook. The title? Cheat. Her message? Use ready-made ingredients to save time and still produce healthy, nutritious meals. Waterstone said this cookbook sold more editions than any cookbook they'd ever sold. It was clear. Delia had struck a chord. It resonated with millions of people. She recognized that you don't have to slave away all day to feed your family. And that sacrifice and suffering are not the two main ingredients in a meal for your family. And so I'd like to encourage you to cheat, to take shortcuts, to cut corners, to hoover just the center of the room. <laughs> don't go into the corners every time. Don't go under the furniture. Take it easy. Take shortcuts and use the time that you save to do something that actually matters to you. 
Do your children care if they live in a spotless house? Or would they rather have a mother who had a life that excited her? A passion that she pursued? Something to focus on other than her children? Barbara's car was filthy. Not the outside so much. The rain in Belfast took care of that. But the inside. Between the crisp packets and the notebooks and the umbrellas and the bits of paper, you didn't know where to put your feet. Her car may have been a mess, but it's obvious Barbara made her mark. I'm sure her children are very proud of her. P.D. James, who got up early to write, she published 19 novels and dozens of other works. Delia Smith, her boyfriend, when she was a teenager, used to compliment her cooking. That encouraged her to develop that talent. And now she's made a career of cooking. Moreover, she's inspired millions of people to be confident in the kitchen. Last Friday night, when I made my stand-up debut, I got the biggest kick you could imagine. And I can tell you, it was a hell of a lot better than doing laundry. <laughs> and I enjoy doing laundry. Take my advice. Neglect the housework. Use that time to explore something new. You may find a part of you sparks to life. Amateur dramatics, photography, knitting, cake decorating, hill walking. You don't know where it will lead. But put in the effort. Put in the time. You may be amazed how great you can be. And don't wait for it to start snowing to remember how special you are. One in a trillion you. And don't wait for your gift to expire. Don't let procrastination rob you and all of us of your special gift. That one thing that you alone are here to contribute. When you procrastinate, you can't be great. And you're here 